Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1981, and today we are going to wrap up Wizardry. I mentioned before that I had planned on showing the images from the manual during gameplay. There was never a good spot for that though, so I will include those here. I also will be using a script for this, which is something I have not done before. However, because this game took so much time, I felt it deserved a longer, more well-composed review. I wanted to start with the positive aspects of the game. There are some worth highlighting. Arguably, the biggest highlight of this game is that this game allows you to create an entire party. This is something that we have not seen in any of the games we have played for the project to this point. The only other RPG we have played to this point is Ultima which only had the one character available. In that game, the character build, their race, class, and stats ultimately did not matter much to how Ultima was played. Wizardry is very different. In Wizardry, every aspect of character creation will matter. The entire party needs to be planned ahead of time, accounting for party balance, character strengths and weaknesses, and what each character should be able to do as the game progresses. This allows for a much deeper connection between the player and their created characters. The party is an individual creation of the player, and every playthrough will be unique because of the individual nature of each party. Wizardry is also a fairly accurate translation of Dungeons & Dragons into a video game. Although we have seen a couple games that have attempted to use Dungeons & Dragons as a basis for a battle system before, Wizardry is by far the most complete translation of a Dungeons & Dragons style RPG into a single player experience using a computer. Wizardry is also a long game, far longer than anything we have played for video games over time to this point. The previous longest game was Ultima, which lasted a little less than 10 hours total, including all the time I spent off screen grinding for stats. Wizardry, on the other hand, will take at least 20 hours to beat under the best circumstances. If it's a novice player, Wizardry will take much longer. It's easy to imagine spending hundreds of hours mapping the game, building up characters, losing characters, and finally beating the final boss of the game. This is a monumental achievement for a video game in 1981. With those positive aspects of the game said, let's talk about the aspects of the game that did not age well. First and foremost in my mind is the lack of a proper story or any lore to the game. Personally, a game's story is typically my favorite part of the game. However, Wizardry doesn't really have a story. Your motive as a player is to delve to the bottom of the dungeon and defeat the wizard. There is nothing more to it than that. Even that minimal plot is only revealed hours into the game in one small message on the fourth floor. Before that point, the game is little more than a matter of exploration and level grinding. But even after that point, the game is mostly level grinding and exploration. Of the roughly 30 hours needed to beat the game, less than one hour of it would be spent on anything close to a story. The manual doesn't really help the story either. Although full of mechanical instructions on how the game works, the manual does not have any information regarding story or objective. And although the manual is useful and has lots of references that will require the player to keep the manual with them at all times, the manual does not have all the information that the player will need in order to succeed. Information from the game and the manual is lacking. Outside of the lack of story, the part of the game that has aged the worst for me is the randomness of everything. Almost everything about the game's mechanics is random, which is not bad in itself. However, the variance in that randomness is far too high. 
In character creation, for example, characters can have as little as 51 total stat points, and reportedly as high as 100 total stat points. That is a huge range. Level ups in the game are random. Characters can gain stat points when they level up, or they can lose stat points when they level up. Characters that can use magic will be able to cast more magic spells after a level up, but the spells that the characters learn are random. Because of the randomness of level ups, it is possible that a character may become a worse fighter as a result of leveling up, losing key stats while not gaining anything useful. The only way around this is to abuse the save mechanic of the game. Reloading every time a level up isn't what the player wanted. The maze itself is not random. The maze has a set pattern for every playthrough by every player. However, its design will punish any player that does not understand some of the more cruel mechanics of the level's designs. Pits, teleports, turning tiles, and one-way staircases can each doom an entire party if the player is unaware that they exist beforehand. The player is expected to draw out a map as they play. But players drawing that map without understanding warps, looping corridors, and turning tiles will most likely draw inaccurate and less than useful maps. Without an existing layout of the maze, players may think that the maze has random qualities to it that it may not have. The battle system is quite random, with turn order, magic resistances, instant death, and even the permanent loss of levels all a matter of dice rolls. At any time, the dice rolls could go against you and a single battle, no matter how experienced your party, could kill your entire party. That combined with how powerful even some of the most basic magic spells can be, means that even a lower level enemy can cause massive damage to your party if the odds are not on your side. This becomes most apparent at the end of the game. The road to the boss fight has seven fixed encounters before the final battle. Each one of those encounters has the possibility to end the party's run and could even completely destroy the party. Luck has to be on your side for all eight fights in a row just for you to have a chance of winning. The final boss fight is also quite disappointing because of its randomness. Wordna's HP is wildly variable. He can have as little as 30 HP and as high as 120 HP. That means it is possible that a single casting of tilt weight which does 10 to 100 HP of damage to every enemy, could defeat the final boss and his entire party, winning you the game. On the other hand, if Wardna goes first, a single casting of tilt weight could destroy your entire party. It all depends on random calculations. Although I was not able to record beating Wordna with the party I had originally intended to beat him with, I do not feel that was due to a lack of skill or a lack of party strength, but instead mostly due to bad luck. The randomness of so much of the game, when combined with the idea that the party can be lost permanently, means that a single bad encounter can cost over a dozen hours of work for the player in order to get back to where they were. Everything in the game takes time, but nothing takes longer than losing the entire party and either replacing them or trying to find them in a dungeon and bring them back to the castle. And this can all happen with one encounter that does not go the player's way. Even some of the smaller mechanics of the game have a chance to fail. Trying to identify items, trying to open a treasure chest, even something as important as paying the temple to revive your party member. All of these can fail based on a random percentage chance. 
Because of all these issues, the game proves to be frustrating. It feels like only a matter of time before something devastating will happen to your party. Most of these issues could be solved with a single mechanic change. Should the game allow the player to save at any time inside the game and reload that save at any time, most of these issues would not be nearly as bad of an issue for a modern audience. However, the game is normally only saved when the player quits the game. For hardcore fans of Dungeons & Dragons, many of these issues could be overlooked since these are mechanics that are very similar to Dungeons & Dragons. However, as Dungeons & Dragons is translated to a single player video game experience and the player's options are limited, the issues with the randomness become more apparent and harder to overlook. The mechanics of the game will be the hardest for a modern player to overlook. The graphics are what you would expect for the time, and although they haven't aged particularly well, fans of these kinds of games will most likely be willing to deal with the aged graphics. The sound in the game is almost non-existent, but that may not be too important to many players of this kind of game. In terms of replayability, that is really dependent on the player. For me personally, I have no interest in playing this game again. I would suggest that only the most dedicated players of dungeon crawling RPGs would be interested in playing this game once, let alone multiple times. For most of the modern audience, this game will be too taxing, too slow, and too frustrating to be enjoyed. While the game is groundbreaking and highly influential for the time, I would not recommend Wizardry to a modern audience. And that's my modern take on the game. In 1981, Wizardry became the most popular Apple II game of the year. In 1982, SirTech released Wizardry Revision 2, which featured some minor improvements on the original game. Between the two versions, Wizardry sold 200,000 copies in its first three years, outselling Ultima, the other major RPG of the time. It has been reported that in total, Wizardry sold over 500,000 copies. The critics were also positive. At the time, it was seen as one of the best, if not the best, Dungeons & Dragons style RPG video game on the market. As time has gone on, the game has remained popular with critics. The game has been cited among the greatest video games of all time. Wizardry would be popular enough to generate ports and sequels, and is often cited as a major influence on role-playing video games as a genre. Looking ahead, Wizardry would make a lot of money for Surtex software, and we will hear from them again as we continue. That means we will hear from Norman Sirotech again. We will also hear from the programmers, Andrew Greenberg and Robert Woodhead again. They would continue to create role-playing video games. And that will do it for the story of wizardry for now. My name is Ballar Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video when we go on the defense again.